Hi guys, Dave Wilson here again, and today, gold plating with this thing, the Pepe Tools pen plater. So, come with me, let me show you how to gold plate things. Follow me. Okay guys, so this is the Pepe Tools digital pen plating system, or pen plater. It consists of the main unit itself, which is made out of acrylic. Take a close look at that in a second. You've got the power supply with optional plugs. You've got the cable with the crocodile clip on. Comes with three jars, and you can see I've got some chemicals in there. I'll explain what those are in a moment. It comes with a couple of spur nibs, and this is the actual pen itself. And obviously, I've been using this one. Now, the power adapter works with 110 to 220 volts so it's suitable for USA and Europe and it comes with two interchangeable plugs um, obviously if you're here in the UK we have the square plugs so what you'll need to do in the UK is to use the Euro adapter and that just plugs in and snaps in and then you'll need to get yourself one of these European shaver adapters so, you know, this is like the electric razor adapter. So, plug that in, and then you can use the Euro plugs in there. Uh, that'll work absolutely fine in the UK. So, the power plugs in the left hand side there. It's a slightly larger socket, so you can't get it wrong. So, that just slots in, and you see it all lights up, so you know it's working. The cable with the crocodile clip that plugs in at the side of it there. So that's with our little crocodile clip in there. And then over on the other side here, we've got two connectors on the right, and we can use those for plugging in the pen. And if you want to buy additional pens, you can actually plug two in at once. So that's really useful. Now, as you can see on the display here, as we rotate the controls, we can go from 1.3 volts up to 17. If you're plating a larger item, turn it up for very small tiny things perhaps little earring studs and that you might want to turn it down a little bit there's no fixed rule it's just trial and error if it isn't working maybe try just turning it up a little bit to get started you need to put your felt nozzle into the end of the pen and make sure it's all the way in very important make sure that you use gloves or some plastic tweezers you don't want to get greasy fingerprints on the nib because that will stop it from working. The colour of the solution does not necessarily correspond to the colour of the thing that you're plating so make sure that you keep everything well labelled. Don't swap your caps over and keep everything separate then you know exactly what they are. Another tip I will say is if you get large bottles of the plating solution uh, it can be quite expensive so just put a little bit into these little jars and then that way you avoid the chance of contaminating your bigger jars. So, let's plate something. Okay, so a great thing to practice on are coins. Um, this is a British 10p. They're actually steel and then they're plated over the top with this kind of shiny silvery rhodium plating. I'm not sure what it is actually. But it's very important that the surface is clean and free of grease. So, I'm just using some methylated spirits here. Alcohol. Um, just give that a nice wipe over and then dry it off and again notice I've got the gloves on avoid getting greasy finger marks on it otherwise the plating will not stick attach your crocodile clip uh, make sure that it's in contact with the metal you need an electrical circuit so don't attach it to a part that's plastic or wood or a stone or something it's got to be in contact with the metal so 14 karat yellow gold and all we do dip the nib in just wipe off the excess the drips I've got it set to maximum power electricity is going through the pen into the nib and it's making a circuit with the coin and the crocodile clip and what it's doing is it's electrically moving the gold out of the solution and it's depositing it onto the surface of the coin 
So just work your way around the piece and that's what's great about this. You can even trim the nibs if you want, if you want to get in really fine, tight details. Now you'll find that after a certain time it's not depositing any more gold and that's because this little drop of solution here we've actually plated all the gold out of it, we've depleted all the gold in that liquid. So what you do, just dry it off and just re-dip your pen. Wipe off the excess again and so what we're doing here because we've got fresh solution we've got gold in the nib again. So as we move it round we'll see we get more gold appearing. Uh, once you've done it just wipe it over give it a rinse and that's fine that's all you need to do. You don't need to varnish it or plate anything else over the top uh, that's it it's good to go. Now these are a pair of stainless steel tweezers and I want to show you something. I'm connected and I've got the pen there nicely loaded up and you see it's it's going on but it's not really it's not really that effective and the reason is I haven't cleaned these so let me just show you the difference you see it isn't sticking on so I'm just going to give them a light rub with a micro mesh pad very fine just to remove any oxide tarnish anything from the surface. Um, just going to give it a little rub with some alcohol just to remove any grease or oil because obviously I've been handling these and I've got my fingers all over them. Um, there we go, just dry that off. Now if I do it we should start to see some gold plating now. And if you look at this side here this is the piece after I've done a couple of coats. Uh, you can see the difference there. So just by giving it that little bit of surface prep makes all the difference. Now this is something that's quite popular now. This bracelet is appears to be gold but it's actually sterling silver and then gold plated. And you're starting to see this a lot now because of the cost of the gold obviously. So if I made any repairs to a bracelet like this, I would have to use sterling silver. This is a sterling silver jump ring. So hopefully you can see the difference there. So this is one that I've gold plated and then this is the original silver ring. So you can see now if I used any, rip any of these jump rings to repair this bracelet, just a quick rub over with the pen plater and it would instantly disguise it and it would match in well. So great example of that. So apart from being great for repairs, you can also use it on silver pieces to selectively highlight. Uh, you see here I'm applying some gold to this kind of stylized flower. And it really just helps to pick out little details. And it just has that little extra touch of colour and that little touch of class. So rather than being all one colour, you've now got silver and gold. So you see, it just it just adds to the piece, I think. Okay, so that's the gold. So let's try some rhodium plating, and I'll show you a few uses for this. So there we go. Make sure that there are no traces at all of the gold plating solution in there. So using clean hands, insert the new nib. Again, make sure you don't get any grease or fingerprints on it. This is a British one penny. and They're actually steel and copper plated. They're not made out of real copper anymore, too expensive. So again, I've got the rhodium plating this time and I'm going straight onto the copper. Oh wow, you can really see that. Instantly you can see the effect of that there. That's very visible. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. So just give a little clean off. And hopefully you can see that there. That's really effective. That gives a real great contrast between the copper and the rhodium. Just to show you the two. So this is the gold plated queen. And this is rhodium plating on the copper there. So yeah, nice. We like that. 
Now where this unit really comes into its own is when you have things like this. Gem set rings on a 9 carat yellow band. Because quite often the claw settings are rhodium plated and that makes the spurtle and that gets it uh, you know, white and bright. So by just going over it with the rhodium we can now just help to bring that spurtle back to these mounts by just making them white and shiny. And it doesn't take much. I hope you can see this on camera. I can see this now with my eye. If you look on the top here you can see where these claws are actually yellow, where they've been sanded and polished. But just a touch and instantly you can see the rhodium plating. It looks grey at first but just keep going, build it up and it'll start to turn white and spurtle. So hopefully you can see that there around the sides and around the claws. You can see that the band is actually still yellow. Couple of tips guys. First of all, surface preparation is everything and I cannot stress that enough. Your piece needs to be clean, the surface needs to be clean and grease free. So even the grease from your fingertips, either on your piece or on the nibs, that is going to ruin everything. So keep everything dry and grease free. Use latex gloves, use tweezers if you're changing the nibs. Keep everything clean and grease free. I use alcohol, methylated spirits for cleaning things, just getting that grease off. Gold plating, that tends to stick to most things. So most things can be gold plated. The rhodium plating, that is sometimes a little bit more fussy. So if you're going on to burr metal and you want a really nice shiny finish, then the advice is to nickel plate it first, then put the rhodium over the top of that and you'll get that really bright white finish. Another important piece of advice is when you get your solutions, you must make sure that you get pen plating solutions. Okay, and the difference is that the normal gold plating solutions are designed for the big units with the big baths in and they're not as powerful and they're not designed to work with these little pen plating systems so you must get pen plating solutions. If you are using different solutions obviously you need to keep them all separate, keep your nibs clean, separate everything. So it's a great idea to get a couple of these pens and a good stash of the nibs and keep the pens separate so you can have one for rhodium, one for yellow gold, whatever. But also another little tip is when using these little jars just pour a little bit of your solution into the jars. Avoid putting your pen into like a big jar or a big bottle because you could potentially get it dirty and contaminate it. And these solutions are expensive because of course they contain precious metals. I hope you found that useful, a little insight into what this thing can do. I've been Dave Wilson, thanks for watching and I'll see you real soon on the next video. Bye for now.